over every part, every past, every power and personality. Take things causing causing trouble in the body of Christ. Let take power over them. Let take the power and authority over them. That we take power, we take authority over every power causing problem in the house of God. Malika ribo mazenta ya baba sheke te boloria. Malira sakata ya baba. Tell God that it should uproot every witch. Malima santa ya baba. Makatare bole ma yeke te suto boloria. Every weed in the body of Christ. Every weed, Father, uproot it now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Let's say, Father, every plan and strategy of the of the devil against your church, Father, we scatter it this morning. We scatter it this morning. We destroy it this morning. In the name of Jesus, it shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' wonderful, most precious and excellent name, we have prayed. Let's commit today's service into God's hand, O Lord. That He should take control of today's service. That we want to see Him in our midst. Every of our burden that we brought here this morning, Marie Katabashe de He will see to it now. In the name of Jesus Christ, brethren, open your mouth and tell God. You can only tell it to God. You can't tell it to man. If you tell it to man, they will laugh you. Tell it to God now so that He will meet you at the very point of your name. Marie Katabala. Zekete Yebobo. Zuma Satayaba Shekete Boloria. Li Kariba Mazantayaba. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Everlasting Father, once again, as usual, we know that whenever we come to this altar to ask you for anything, you are always there to, to answer our prayers. We say, may your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you for prayer answer. Thank you for today's service will be glorious. Thank you because we will see you from the beginning to the end. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Thank you faithful Father, for in Jesus' wonderful, most precious and excellent name we have prayed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Just wave your hands to heaven once again and say, Father, you are worthy. Jesus, you are worthy. Ancient of days, we glorify you. We exalt you. We magnify you. You are the ancient of days. There is none to be compared unto you. There is none to be likened unto you. We are here to worship you this morning once again. We are here to lift our voice in praise for all that you have done and in expectance of what you are set to do for us today. To you alone be your praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me
come and draw from you once again. Father, we ask that as we have come, Holy Spirit of God, make us to be doers of your word, even as we hear your word, than the hearers of your word, than the hearers of your word alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your word find expression in our hearts and let it perform wonders and miracles in our life so that our lives can be transformed for good. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. I want us to I want to exhort us this morning on what I titled I will be their God. I will be their God. The text is taken from Jeremiah 32 verse 38. Jeremiah 32 verse 38 and it says, "And they shall be my people, and I will be their God." If I'm allowed to paraphrase, I will say, God is saying that he will, that we shall be his people and he will be our God. That means, praise tabernacle shall be his people and he will be a God to praise tabernacle people. For God to be your God and for you to be a child of God or for us to be children of God, we must obey him as our God. We must believe and agree with him. We must also trust him for who he is. And we must also know him as our God. To know God intimately brings tranquility and peace into our troubled souls. Only if we can believe and trust him. Seeing God outwardly without having an intimate relationship with him. Seeing God miraculous works without believing and knowing him. Seeing the signs and wonders of God without having a father and son relationship with him will only leave us in worries. It will only leave us in pains. It will only leave us in sorrow. It will only leave us in frustration, disappointment, and discouragement. And when we find ourselves in all these situations. Doubt and unbelief will set in in our hearts because God does not act the way we think he should act. He, God, he does not answer us the way we want him to answer us. But in Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 11, God is saying that. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways are your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways with you. Because we don't want, because we did not think the way God thinks. Because our ways are not the ways of God. When we want him to answer our prayer points in a way that we want him to answer us. And if it's not like that, we think, oh, God does not exist. God does not exist. I have been serving God all these years. Why can't he just answer this singular prayer? Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie. Or a man that will change his mind. That have he said it and he will not do it. God is not a man. Does not do things the way we do things. Most often times we forget about the promises of God concerning our life. That is why doubts and unbelief always distract us from knowing God, our creator. Psalm 102 verse 13 says, I will arise and have mercy on God's will and his family. For the time to favor God's will and his family. Yea, the time, the set time has come. God's time is different from man's time. God has a time for everything on earth. And I will want each and every one of us to use that as a prayer point this morning. Ask God to arise for you that this is the set time to favor you. Ask him to have mercy on you. Use your name in place of God's will. Say, Father, have, Father arise and have mercy on me. For the third time to favor me. Yes. This is the third time. Father arise 
and have mercy on each and every one of us. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. The devil has sown different, si different types of seed in the hands of believers. Seeds of confusion, seeds of disappointment, seeds of frustration. And as a result of that, doubt and unbelief has been in the mind of believers. And that has been the problem of the Israelites. The Israelites, they doubt God, irrespective of the wonders, signs, and miracles that God did in their midst. In Exodus 16, verse 2, they complain and they murmur against God. Even as God saved them from the hands of the Egyptians, where they were suffering, where they were having pains, they said that it is better that we die in the hand, that we die in Egypt by the hands of the Lord, that to die in this wilderness. Why were they grumbling? Why were they murmuring? Because they only have a kind of knowledge about God. They only see God from periphery. They do not know God in depth. They do not care. They do not bother to know that this God that made it possible for us to cross this Red Sea, who is this God? And why were they grumbling and murmuring? Because of food. They murmur. And God gave them manna and quail. As a point, in Numbers 14, verse 1 to 4, they begin to murmur again. Because of food. That it will be better to die in Egypt than for God to come and kill us in this wilderness. That to deliver our wives and children to be as prey in this wilderness. It's better to return to Egypt. They begin to remember the onions, the cucumber, the agusi, the garlic, the meat that they were eating freely in the Egypt. But they forgot what God says to them in Exodus 6. Verse 7, he says, I will take you as my own, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. Where they suffered, where they work as slaves to the Egyptians, that was where they preferred to go back. Why? Because of food, what to eat. They begin to murmur. Then, in Numbers, verse 27, Numbers 14, 27 to, 8, to 28, God answered them, and he replied them, he says, How long will I bear with this evil congregation? I have heard their complaints and murmuring. And God, God, God got angry in verse 28, and he says, As truly as I live, as you have complained and murmured in my ears, you will die in this wilderness because you did not believe me. You doubt me, irrespective of the wonders, signs and wonders that I have performed in your midst. I rain down manna and quail for you to eat. Yet, you refuse to find out where does this manna come from? Where does this quail come from? Because of that, all of them, they will die in the wilderness. He said they will not enter into the land flowing with milk and honey. And for their wives and children, that they will wander for 40 years until the last person died in that wilderness. Lesson for each and every one of us. Thank God for today's opening heaven. He says, we should be mindful of what comes out of our mouth. Because the words of our mouth are powerful. The lesson from there is that we should be mindful of what comes out of our mouth. Not everything we say irrespective of the circumstances that comes around us. You are also mindful that God knows about everything that we are passing through. He knows the intent of the heart. That is why he says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, he says, For I know the thoughts I have towards you, the thoughts of good and not of evil, to you, for you to have an expected end. God has good plans for us. So it's just for us to confess it out. That the good plans that you have for me, Father, make them to be manifest. Father, make them to manifest. Instead of complaining, instead of groaning, instead of mourning, instead
instead of murmuring. So many persons, instead of submitting their prayers to God, they begin to complain. If they see a tree, they complain to the tree. If they see animal, they complain to they complain to animal. People complain a lot. If you allow them, they will complain for the whole world. May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. We don't wait for the expected end. Everything sharp sharp. Marriage sharp sharp. Well sharp sharp. Why is it so? We want everything in starter. That was the case of the king, of the case of a king that made Elijah in 2 Kings 13, 18 to 19. 2 Kings 13, 18 to 19. This king was in trouble. He was waging war here and there. Right, left, center. A war that might kill him. He go and meet Elijah. Presented his case before Elijah. Elijah told him, struck, bring your staff and begin to strike the ground. This king struck the ground only three times. Elijah got angry. He asked him, who asked you to stop? Why did you stop? The king was just looking at him. Elijah got angry. He said, how I wish you can struck more. How I wish you can struck up to six to seven times. We will have a total victory. Leave my presence. Go away. You die, you die. You survive, you survive. And that was the last man Elijah met before he died. And after that discussion, Elijah died. Everything sharp, sharp. He couldn't wait for the expected end. When they proclaim a fast, fast from 6 to 6, from fast 12 to o'clock, we said, oh, we have tried. We begin to justify our excuse for not completing the fast. We couldn't wait for the expected end. And we break the fast by 3 or 12 o'clock. Say, ah, God understands. Who says so? Are you the one understanding for God? God does not understand that kind of principles. We want everything sharp, sharp. Why? Because we don't know the God that we serve. Why? Because we don't have intimate relationship with our Creator. Why? Because we don't know God's capacity and capability. That's why the Word of God says in Jeremiah that I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Why can't we wait for God patiently? Why can't we wait for God? What everything shall shall be. He says, I am the creator of the whole universe, the father of the fatherless, and the husband of the widow. After the creation of the whole world, in Isaiah 40 verse 12, he brought all the waters in the whole world together, and he measured them in the hollow of his hand. He measured the whole waters in the whole world in the hollow of his hand. It's like bringing a basket and fresh water inside. That was what God did. And the whole basket was full of water to show his mightiness, to show his greatness to mankind. And not only that, he brought all the mountains and put them all together in this cave. He measured them to know the quantity of mountains that he created. He also measured the, whole, the heavens with a span. Why can't we just believe this God? Mark 11, 24 says, whatever thing you ask God in prayer, when you believe, you will have them. That was also in today's open heaven. That means, even as we pray, there's a doubt, there's an altar of doubt in our mind. There's an altar of doubt in our eyes, in our heart. I will begin to say, this thing that I'm requesting God for, will he even answer me? I've been making this request for donkey years. Will he even answer me? Only that thought that you have, your, you have in your heart, God will never answer that kind of prayer. He says, whatever you ask when you pray, only if you believe, you will have it. Once you doubt, you will never have answer to it. Because it's in the world. He said, if you believe, whatever you ask, you will have it. May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, someone will ask. Now that unbelief has become a problem. So many people have been overwhelmed by doubt and unbelief. So many persons have been 
smiling in unbelief. Let's look at Mark 9, verse 17. Mark 9, verse 17, down. There was a man that a demon was tormenting his son. Many a times, when this child go and fetch water in the stream, the demon will show himself and make attempt to he will, he, will, he, will, he will mess up the child just to make sure that he truncates the destiny of this child. To make sure that this child gets drawn in the water. But God will save that child. When he's in the fire cooking, the demon will come. He will begin to torment the boy. Just for the boy to fall in the fire and get burnt. But we thank God for our Lord Jesus Christ. And this father is a follower of God. He's a follower of Jesus Christ. He believed Jesus Christ and he also believed his disciples. Tell this child to go and meet his disciples. Unfortunately, the disciples were unable to deliver this child. They begin to wonder, how come this demon is so strong for you to deliver? I believe your master. I also believe you. Why is it possible? The man proceeds to meet our Lord, our Savior. Because he believed that, okay, for a version, the disciples are unable to deliver his son. Jesus Christ will do that. So, he went and met Jesus Christ. As they met Jesus Christ, the demon showed up. He even did worse than what he has been doing before. He began to torment this child to the point that the boy died. And his father began to doubt. Say, uh -uh, even in the presence of you, Jesus Christ, even the situation is worse. My child is dead now. What will I do? The belief that he have in God, the trust that he have in God, all flew away. Jesus was just watching him. Jesus knows what was going on in his heart because he knows the intent of man. The man expect that as he bring the child, Jesus will just say, oh, demon, go away. I cast you out in the name of our God, our Creator. But Jesus was just looking. He was watching the demon. He was just watching the demon tormenting the child. He asked the father, how long has this been? Father said, let me answer you. You are wasting time. My child is dead. He's dead already. He said she's child bed. He told Jesus everything. But only if you can help me. Only if you can save my son. That's to tell you that you have lost confidence in Jesus Christ. Jesus returned the word back to him. He said, I will have mercy on you. But only if you can believe that anyone that believes, all things are possible for that person. Immediately, the man fell down on his face and said, Jesus, help my unbelief. Father, help my unbelief. Father, help my unbelief. Father, help my unbelief. To tell you that even at times when you pray, that we set in. At that point, ask God to help you in your unbelief. So, as we are seated in the church this morning, and most of times we doubt God. Why? Because we don't know His might. Why? Because we don't know His capacity. If we know His capability, we will trust God with everything in us. I'm going to rise to our feet this morning. And pray that single prayer. Rise to your feet, everyone. And let's ask God to help us in any way that we have doubted him. Say, Father, my God, help my unbelief. Jesus, son of David, help my unbelief. Father, help our unbelief, O oh Lord, in any area that I have doubted your word before. Father, help my unbelief. Father, help my unbelief. Father, help our unbelief as a church. Father, help our unbelief. Father, help our unbelief. Father, help my unbelief, O Lord. Father, help my unbelief. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. For you are the Lord of lords. You are the King of
of king. You are the ancient of days. You are the everlasting God. You are the beginning and the ending. You are the author and finisher of our faith. Father, we trust you and we believe you. Because you do everything in your mind to make sure that man can believe you. But then, we still doubt you. Without your majesty, without your greatness. Father, help our unbelief. Father, help our unbelief at this moment. In any area that we have doubted you before, Father, help our unbelief. And help us going forward. Every spirit, every altar of doubt that the enemy, the devil, the wicked ones that we put in our hearts so that we can disbelieve you. Father, release it unto us to believe you more. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Let's stretch for the hand to the man of God this day and let's ask God to strengthen him like never before. This he has done today, God will count it unto righteousness for him. God will build his wall of fire around him and around his household. Ask God to uphold it. All that he has sent this day, let there be manifestation. Ask God that the world that he has sowed into your life, into my life, there will be express performance in the name of Jesus. So, Father and our God, we thank you. We appreciate you for yet another time in your presence. Thank you for having us in mind. Thank you for speaking to us in another dimension. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, concerning your son that you have used, you are the one that have called him, you have brought him thus far. Let it please him. Let it please you. That according to your word in Isaiah 48, 15, his ways will be prosperous in the name of Jesus. In the counting of the generals, we ask, O oh Lord, in his name will not be found wanting. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Quickly this morning, I've transferred my tithe online. I've given my tithe. I want to pay my tithe. Can you please be on your feet? I've transferred my tithe online. I want to give my tithe. You want to make a transfer right away? Please do that to 101-586-5372. If you are standing up for tithe, please move forward. Send that tithe and errand this morning. If you want to make a transfer, you can also join me. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We appreciate you for using your son. Lord, this that he has done this day, we ask, O oh Lord, that the bounty for reward for him and his household in the name of Jesus. Lord, just as your word has come forth this day, we ask that you continually be his God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Okay, quickly, we are going to be on our feet this morning. I want to give my offering to the Lord, only to God, not to man. Or you want to make a transfer, please be on our feet. And let the giving come from your heart. Let your substance show it and let your person show it. Let's be on our feet this morning while the choir leads us. Jehovah, 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 Jehovah. Oh, my. 
offering let it answer in my life that's your name Jehovah by the reason of this offering this day let that name answer in my life speak that in convention and in belief Let that name answer in my life. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We appreciate you for yet another time in your presence this day. Lord, as we have brought our offering to you online, in cash, on transfer, we ask this day, and according to your word in Psalm 84, verse 11, you continually be the sun and the shield over every life. In the name of Jesus. Your grace and glory will speak for us. Above all, no good thing will you withhold from us. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Let's be seated in his presence. This day is your first time of worshiping with us in praise tabernacle. Do we have anyone like that in the house? Today is your first time of coming to praise tabernacle. Anyone like that in the house? Oh, God bless you, my brother. Please come to the VIP. At the right time, with the right, right people, you, you will never go back. Please come back. to the VIP section. The same way you came, you are in the right place. You are in the right place. At the right time, with the right people, you will never go back. The same way you Hands to hands together we will stand. And the hands together we will stand. We need you to build this family. We need you to build this family.
someone's testimony in the name of Jesus. Amen. So that Sunday we're going to be doing a whole lot and I want to start with the one that it matters to your destiny, to our destiny as a parish. That day we shall be taking offering for our area headquarter building. I think you will celebrate God. Because when God asks you to give, it is set time for him to bless you. So that day, we're going to be purchasing blocks that each of the block costs 3,000 naira. You can purchase as an individual, preferably. You can also purchase as a family, but I will advise that you purchase as an individual because this race is an individual race. So, let's have it in mind that that day we shall be taking the area building offering and each block that will be buying costs 3,000 naira. You are allowed to buy minimum of one. You are not allowed to buy half block. So you can buy minimum of one, you can buy five, you can buy hundred, you can buy a thousand. So it depends on how the Lord God has laid into your heart. That day is going to be a day of blessing. And we're going to thank God like never before ahead of our blessings. And our blessing will manifest speedily in the name of Jesus. And also, let's be informed and be reminded that we are also... Redeem Christian Church of God Vision 2032. Where them target to get 40 million members then. It don't show day. The church don't they enter different, different better level scenes. As the church just they grow higher, higher, we serve the ready to follow the road. We go carry the church, enter new season, where the church go take grow reach highest level. The plan and assignment for every real member of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. The target now to get more more members then. Make the church for grow rich at least 40 million member then by the year 2032. As you don't hear them now, share you know your work for this bumptious plan. Number one, operation 111. This one means say, one person must to bring one person to church and make sure say, the person went in bring, go there born again. Plus, go steady put for church. Number two, you must today pray every day for more and more people to give their life to Christ and make them for steady for the parish where they invite them put. Number three, check and talk to the people where you bring to church. Plus, the new ones then we just born again. See them go steady put for church. Number four, now to use your social media platform then. Plus, every opportunity where you get to talk about Jesus Christ and to talk about the church plus all other church programs then. Number five, now to help people to reach church every week. Either say you provide transport or give donation for transportation. As you see me so, eh? I don't join this bumptious plan where Baba God carry come for in church. Redeem Christian Church of God.